the most impressive and grand temple ever seen. The Bible is very descriptive and elaborate with the details involved in building the first temple that was dedicated to the worship of God. The intricate designs, the specifications, and the opulent materials used in the building of this temple are a testament to the significance of this construction to God and to His people. A temple in the Old Testament of the Bible is a building dedicated to worship God, and this was going to be the first of its kind, because before the building of temples as a place of worship, people saw quiet places, like mountains, open fields, or any kind of secluded environment that is quiet to worship God. Then there was also the tabernacle that was built years ago when Moses was still leading. It was basically carried on the shoulders of men and contained precious materials like the miraculous manna from heaven that they ate in the wilderness. However, this particular large house in Solomon's days was to be built as a place to worship, pray, and learn about God's word. Today, we still worship God in temples or buildings dedicated to the worship of our God. However, we also have a clear understanding about the physical bodies of the Holy Spirit-filled believers as the temple of God. The constructed temples, which are physical structures built by men, and the human body, which is also a physical structure built by God, are still relevant pieces of worship today. They are both necessary and glorifying to God because they are His concepts. The origin of this concept of building any kind of place of worship came originally from God in Exodus 25, 9 AMP to Moses. You shall construct it in accordance with everything that I am going to show you, as the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furniture. When Solomon started his reign as the new king of Israel after his father passed, he continued from where his father left off in his deep desire and quest to build a great house for God. 1 Kings 5, 2-12 AMP says, Then Solomon sent word to Haram, saying, You know that David my father could not build a house, temple, for the name, Presence of the Lord his God, because of the wars which surrounded him, until the Lord put his enemies under his feet. But now that the Lord my God has given me rest, from war on every side. There is neither adversary nor misfortune confronting me. Behold, I intend to build a house, temple, to the name of the Lord my God, just as the Lord said to my father David, Your son, whom I will put on your throne in your place, shall build the house for my name and presence. So now command that they cut cedar trees from Lebanon for me, and my servants will join your servants and I will give you whatever wages you set for your servants. For you know that there is no one among us who knows how to cut timber like the men of Sidon. When Haram heard the words of Solomon, he rejoiced greatly and said, Blessed be the Lord this day, who has given David a wise son to be king over this great people. So Haram sent word to Solomon, saying, I have heard the message which you sent me. I will do everything you wish concerning the cedar and cypress timber. My servants will bring the logs down from Lebanon to the Mediterranean Sea, and I will have them made into rafts to go by sea to the place, port, that you direct me. Then I will have them broken up there, and you shall carry them away. Then you shall return the favor by providing food for my household. So Haram gave Solomon all the cedar and cypress timber he desired. And Solomon gave Haram 20,000 cores of wheat as food for his household, and 20 cores of pure olive oil. Solomon gave all these to Haram each year. The Lord gave Solomon wisdom just as he promised him. And there was peace between Haram and Solomon, and the two of them made a treaty. Solomon started by first assembling the workforce for the construction of this temple. He knew he needed the best hands in the nation to work on this mammoth project from start to finish. The Bible records a total of 183,300 men that were engaged to perform different functions while the project was ongoing. 1 Kings 5, 13-18 AMP 
King Solomon levied forced laborers from all Israel, and the forced laborers numbered 30,000 men. He sent them to Lebanon, 10,000 a month in shifts. One month they were in Lebanon and two months at home. Adoniram was in charge of the forced laborers. Solomon had 70,000 burden bearers, transporters, and 80,000 stone masons in the hill country of Judah. Besides Solomon's 3,300 chief deputies who were in charge of the project and who were in charge of the people doing the work, the king gave orders and they quarried great stones, valuable stones, to lay the foundation of the house temple with cut stones. So Solomon's builders and Haram's builders and the men of Gebel cut and chiseled the stones and prepared the timber and the stones to build the house, temple. Then the construction process began in 1 Kings 6, 1-38 AMP. And we are given a graphic description. Now it came about in the 418th year after the Israelites came out of the land of Egypt, in the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel in the month of Ziv, April, May, which is the second month, that he began to build the Lord's house, temple. The length of the house which King Solomon built for the Lord was 60 cubits, 90 feet, its width 20, 30 feet, and its height 30 cubits, 45 feet. The porch in front of the main room of the house, temple, was 20 cubits long corresponding to the width of the house, and its depth in front of the house was ten cubits. He also made framed artistic window openings for the house. Against the wall of the house, he built extensions around the walls of the house, around both the main room, holy place, and the holy of holies, and he made side chambers all around. The lowest story was five cubits wide, the middle was six cubits wide, and the third was seven cubits wide for he made offsets, niches in the walls, all around on the outside of the house, so that the supporting beams would not be inserted into the walls of the house. While it was being built, the house was built of stone prepared and finished pre-cut at the quarry, and no hammer, axe, or iron tool of any kind was heard in the house while it was under construction. The entrance to the lowest side chamber was on the right, or south side of the house, and they would go up winding stairs to the middle level, and from the middle to the third. So Solomon built the house, temple, and finished it, and roofed the house with beams and boards of cedar. Then he built the extensions of rooms against the entire house, each story five cubits high, and they were attached to the house with timbers of cedar. Now the word of the Lord came to Solomon, saying, Concerning this house which you are building, if you will walk in my statutes and execute my precepts and keep all of my commandments by walking in them, then I will carry out my word, promises, with you which I made to David your father. I will dwell among the sons, descendants of Israel, and will not abandon my people Israel. So Solomon built the house, temple, and finished it. He built the walls of the interior of the house that is, the holy place in the holy of holies, with boards of cedar, from the floor of the house to the rafters of the ceiling. He overlaid the interior with wood, and he overlaid the floor of the house with boards of cypress. He built twenty cubits on the rear of the house with boards of cedar from the floor to the ceiling. He built its interior as the inner sanctuary, the holy of holies, the rest of the house, that is, the temple in front of the Holy of Holies, was forty cubits long. The cedar on the house within had wood carvings in the shape of gourds and open flowers. Everything was cedar, no stone was visible. Then he prepared the Holy of Holies within the house, in order to put the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord there. The Holy of Holies was twenty cubits in length, twenty cubits in width, and twenty cubits in height, a cube, and he overlaid it with pure gold. He also overlaid the cedar altar with gold. Solomon overlaid the interior of the house with pure gold, and he drew chains of gold across the front of the Holy of Holies, inner sanctuary, and he overlaid it with gold. Then he overlaid the entire house with gold until the whole house was finished. 
He also overlaid the entire incense altar, which was by the Holy of Holies with gold. Within the Holy of Holies, he made two cherubim, sculptured figures of olive wood, each ten cubits high. One wing of the cherub was five cubits long, and the other wing was also five cubits long. It was ten cubits from the tip of one wing to the tip of the other. The wingspan of the other cherub was also ten cubits. The measurements and cut shape of the two cherubim were the same. The height of the one cherub was ten cubits, as was the other. He put the cherubim above the ark inside the innermost room of the house, and their wings were spread out so that the wing of the one touched one wall, and the wing of the other cherub was touching the other wall, and their inner wings were touching each other in the middle of the house. Solomon also overlaid the cherubim with gold. He carved all the windows of the house all around with carved engravings of cherubim, palm-shaped decorations, and open flowers, both the inner and the outer sanctuaries. He overlaid the floor of the house with gold, both the inner and outer sanctuaries. For the entrance of the Holy of Holies, he made two folding doors of olive wood, the lintel, header above the door, and five-sided doorposts, frames. So he made two doors of olive wood, and he carved on them carvings of cherubim, palm-shaped decorations, and open flowers, and overlaid them with gold. And he hammered out overlays of gold on the cherubim and palm decorations. Also he made for the entrance of the outer sanctuary, the holy place, four-sided doorposts, frames, of olive wood and two doors of cypress wood. The two leaves of the one door turned on pivots and were folding, and the two leaves of the other door also turned on pivots. He carved cherubim, palm-shaped decorations, and open flowers on the doors, and overlaid them with gold evenly applied on the carved work. He built the inner courtyard with three rows of cut stone and a row of cedar beams. In the fourth year of King Solomon's reign, the foundation of the Lord's house was laid. In the second month, Ziv, April, May, in the eleventh year of King Solomon's reign in the month of Bull, October, November, that is, the eighth month. The house was finished throughout all its parts in accordance with all its specifications. So he built it in seven years. It is amazing to see that this project took seven years, despite the great number of people that worked on the project site. This gives us an idea of how magnificent in detail this temple was.